Hello everybody, hope everything's well, and as always, let's jump right into this. Now this is going to be a relatively short video here, just wanted to discuss a few things out of this video clip. Now what this guy is going to talk about is basically how all whites feel about minorities, okay? Or how most whites feel about minorities, okay? Especially those of heav heavenly melanated descent or black people, okay? Now let's um, play this. The greatest servants in the world are white of the Lord. The white, the white man will always systematic theology. Look at his past history. Look at Encyclopedia Britannica. Look at uh, all, your, all your lexicons, your, the Greek New Testament. Who put that together? White men. It's a white man's language. White men did it. God used the superior race to bring about the Reformation, to whom much was given, much was required. Not like I have something to boast because I'm white. I have a superior responsibility. Now you heard him, okay? That white people are the superior race. Now what? Just hear him double talk, okay? I'm about to play that for you right now. I have a superior responsibility to resist tyranny because the greatest workers of iniquity are white. Do you see what I'm saying? The black pope is white. All the papal, all the papacy is white. They have token blacks there that are cardinals, but they're just token. The wicked, the most wicked white men in the world, wicked men in the world are white. Okay, so, now if the most wicked men in the world are white, how are you the su superior race and servant? All right, you're superior race and the superior servant to God. Okay? But you cause the most evil in the world. Mass genocide, all right? People, we, you already know about this. I already discussed this, all right? But do you see what's in their minds, okay? They see themselves outside the family of man, all right? What she's about to prove with this uh, little statement he's going to make right here, which I'm going to play for you right now. Therefore, this is a war between white men. Righteous white men versus wicked white men. And the blacks can either side with us, submit to us, and help us, or they will side with the, our oppressors as they are now. Yes. Okay, now, you see what I'm saying? It's either side with the righteous blacks, okay? I mean, that's the righteous blacks, sorry. Side with the righteous whites, or side with the oppressed, the, the whites who are oppressing everybody. Well, this doesn't really seem like something that benefits us. Because we're fighting your wars, and we're not building ourselves up. And when we do build ourselves up, you, the righteous whites, and the evil whites seem to come together to shut that down. So, it seems to me that you guys, you whites, want to have your petty wars. And you want indigenous black people to be a part of that. Okay? Maybe for organ harvesting, or you don't have enough people for these wars, okay? But the point I'm trying to make is, is that when it comes to us trying to build ourselves up and trying to become something more than we are, that's out. You understand? And people want to call you racist if, if you want to say, well, blacks should have their own stuff. You know, their own hospitals, own schools, we should teach in the way that's best for us so that we can uh, move th throughout this world the best way that we function, okay, not the best way that they function, do you understand? <clears throat> Let me pray the, uh, the rest of this for you. Um, I've been called a, a written of the, uh, of what was supposedly written on the, um, Statue of Liberty, and I use this quote a lot, and I have it in my um, in my uh, series averting the race war. You may have heard that. But on page 62, <clears throat> this is what um, this is what Carlton Putnam writes in his view, Race and Reason, a Yankee view, and this was the president of Delta Airlines, and it was published in 1961. And here's what he writes on page 62. 
On a marble panel in the Jefferson Memorial in Washington is a fragment of one of Jefferson's sentences. As inscribed on the panel, the words are, quote, Nothing is more certainly written in the book of fate than that these people, the Negroes, are to be free, unquote. As written by Jefferson, there was no period after these words. There was a semicolon, and the sentence continued, quote, Nor is it less certain that the two races, equally free, cannot live under the same government. And that's where we both agree. Black people and white people should be segregated. When you look at how what black people operated back then, before we integrated with whites, um, and he even gets into it himself, saying he has a black friend who talks about this, how we were way better off and way more educated when we were segregated. I have, many, I have had many blacks agree with me and say that, yeah, we were better off before integration. But then when I say, oh, you know, Martha, Martha Luther King messed us up, you know what I'm saying? Even though he he was boule, okay? Uh, which is a part of Freemasonry, uh, which I already got into before, all right? But uh, again, all right, which is a joke anyways, Prince Hall Freemasonry and all that, okay? Uh, Again, we already talked about that, but do you see what I'm saying? These people, all right, want to talk about how, oh, blacks ain't doing nothing for themselves and this, that, and the fourth, you know, the cliche stuff, all right? And I already showed y'all that when blacks were trying to get out of it, all right, such as Black Wall Street and, you know, Fred Hampton trying to build schools and feeding other blacks and stuff like that, they shut her down. They started killing people and all that. Secret programs started being made, such as Cointel Pro. All right. So it was never about getting blacks and helping them when they were freed. All right. They talked about freeing you. They never said about you being equal to them. All right. Y'all, we were never, okay, a part of that. Oh, every man is created equal and stuff like that. <laughs> you, y'all you, thought you were in the sense. Black people thought they were in that sense. <laughs> Listen, if that were the case, they would show you your true history, first of all. Okay, black colleges wouldn't be mostly funded by whites. I hate to tell you. Okay, most of our programs are either white funded or white co-created. I mean, do I need to go on? When we really actually talk about fighting or getting our independence, all right, that's when these righteous whites and these evil whites will come together for a common goal, all right, to bring down in indigenous people. Those are the facts. Okay? Now let me play the rest of this clip for you. That was omitted because the purpose of the Jesuits is to formally and forcefully amalgamate this country so as to bastardize and mongrelize the white race so that the white race will never rise up again in revolt against the power of the Jesuit order. A mulatoized, mongrelized race cannot do it. They have never done it in history. And the Jesuits know this because... Okay, so he's saying that a mongrelized race or a race that's half black half white, or, you know what I'm saying, two different um, cultures, <clears throat> never um, brought about any change is what he's saying. So I'm sure that's a, a major insult to you if you are of uh, mixed breed, all right, or mixed descent. Now, what he's saying is, is that most of the time the mulatto you the mulattoes were always used to um, control blacks and everything, and um, they were used as pawns. Okay, uh, I, I remember someone commenting on one of my videos about that about the mulattoes and how 
they felt that they were a big issue um, to blacks uh, getting out of this what we what were in now. Okay. Now, I want to end this video by saying that we should not worry about uh, how white people feel because we already know the deal. Do you understand? I just wanted to point out to the people who feel like we should come together and they don't see how, oh, you know, blacks and whites should come together and all that. They don't want to be together with you. Do you understand? But, and then when I talk to other blacks about us creating our own and being on our own, and that's what, that's something we need to do in order to find ourselves. Do you understand? Y'all are trying to find yourself, your true origins in a place that doesn't want you to know nothing about yourself or anything at all for the most part okay so um, I do believe in segregation and uh, I believe that is the only way to uh, for us to get out of uh, this oppression we are in because then we'll be able to start seeing things our way and how we see reality all right uh, thank you for listening and peace and balance to the ancient ones